Vlad the Impaler fought many battles, which uh, happened each and every year during his uh, reigns, in different seasons and under uh, many special circumstances. Therefore, it is hard to generalize which equipment he wore. His uh, financial resources and social status allowed him to rotate between many kits and uh, combine many uh, pieces of uh, armor, costumes and weapons. Weather conditions and uh, other circumstances also forced him to adapt this gear. Having said that, it is uh, hard to focus on a particular set of uh, equipment. The following episode primarily tries to reconstruct Vlad's equipment during his uh, famous night uh, uh, attacks in uh, June 1462 against the Ottoman military camp. Greetings, my name is uh, Adrian Gheorghe, I'm a professional historian and part of the international and interdisciplinary research team Corpus Draculiano, which aims at uh, collecting and publishing all historical sources of any kind and origin from and about the famous Valachian voivod Vlad the Impaler Dracula. Before we get started, please consider supporting this uh, scientific uh, uh, project and channel as much as you can, either subscribing or, if your purse allows, donating via PayPal to the address below. As usual, what we are telling here is the result of uh, research carried out by our uh, team of professional historians on uh, original historical sources consulted in uh, countless um, archives, libraries and museums around the world. Heavy and sophisticated military gear did not always play a strict tra tactical role. It was often uh, something to show off, to display rank, social status and ask for respect from uh, your uh, troops. In the age of bad communication on the, the battlefield, equipment and costumes played a, um, a practical role, showing the uh, soldiers where their commander was and in which direction to move. This, uh, his actions were not only a source of inspiration to the common soldier, but also of chaos when uh, a commander set a bad example. Considering that uh, Vlad's night attacks against the Ottoman camp 1462 June 16th to 17th and uh, 22nd to 23rd respectively were meant to be as stealthy as uh, possible and that they uh, implied a close engagement of the enemy ranks, the defensive equipment and the composition of the Valachian troops must have been slightly different than usual. In uh, running on one of his uh, many hit and run uh, actions, Vlad, as well as his uh, soldiers, must have uh, considered an additional uh, layer of uh, protection, this safety precaution was uh, motivated by the close engagement of the enemy lines, which implied uh, a contact with uh, cutting-edge weapons, arms and pole arms. However, the attackers surely um, removed additional metal plates that could have uh, generated friction and therefore noise. Considering the limitations and uh, the advantages of a night uh, attack, Vlad would have uh, also removed the visor of his helmet too. Let me be very clear, unfortunately, no personal belongings of Vlad the Impaler have survived uh, until our times. No swords, no ring, no wine bottles, absolutely nothing. The only way forward is the educated uh, um, guessing while uh, carefully looking into the context of the situation, the supreme satisfaction of a historian. So let's kick it, shall we? Given the close uh, economic uh, relations between uh, Valachia and uh, Transylvanian uh, Saxon cities, and probably also the ties of his uh, family 
to the South German area, it is more li most likely that uh, Vlad's uh, equipment was produced by the Germans in their popular uh, style. So, rather this and not this. Since uh, he was uh, one of the wealthiest uh, Valachian uh, noblemen, this uh, wealth and his uh, status uh, also had to be um, reflected on the battlefield. While some of his elites of lower status could not only afford products of the uh, periphery of uh, the German speaking area, possibly even uh, produced in uh, Transylvania, the Voivode and his most important boyars would uh, buy their equipment from well-known and therefore prestigious centers. In other words, they bought brand name products, although sometimes due to the limited financial resources comparable to the wealthiest magnates from the Hungarian kingdom, they were not of the highest end possible. Some of his uh, weapons uh, must have uh, come from uh, northern Italy, especially from Milan and uh, Venice, as it is the case of the famous and beautiful sword of uh, Stephen the Great, now in Istanbul, Turkey, which uh, represents the finest quality in its class. An Ottoman connection, due to his uh, ties his uh, childhood, when he was a uh, hostage in the empire, is less likely, yet still possible. He may have uh, had at most a saber or a sword in the early Ottoman style with uh, Byzantine influences, see the sword of uh, Sultan uh, Mehmed II, or in the Persian style from uh, Tabriz or uh, Esfahan that was uh, strongly influenced by the Asian side of the Ottoman Empire. By the way, the later was also very popular among the Tatars of the Golden Horde. Or maybe a nice uh, Ottoman uh, mace. He might have uh, gotten this as a present at his uh, liberation from uh, captivity in 1446 or 47 or before his uh, first ascension to the Valachian throne in 1448. That uh, is a long time before uh, 1462. However, during the raids in the um, Ottoman Empire, he may have uh, gotten his hand on uh, a nice sword or saber that uh, belonged to some local uh, leader. With uh, his exile in uh, Moldavia and uh, afterwards in the Hungarian Kingdom, Vlad entered a different uh, world with uh, different aesthetics, uh, aesthetic standards. A different style become uh, prestigious. Consequently, he had to show off with uh, different weapons to the Valachian elites and his followers. So, it wasn't uh, just a simple uh, question of uh, military uh, efficiency or uh, whether or not uh, he had uh, access to certain uh, types of uh, weapons. Perhaps even more important was uh, how uh, others saw him when he displayed his uh, weapons. So, which style and which weapons were uh, perceived in his world as prestigious? Since uh, his world between uh, 1448 and 1476 was the Hungarian Commonwealth. The preferred style must have uh, been uh, the Central European one, but not entirely excluding some Oriental uh, influences of practical or hereditary nature. Vlad appeared on the battlefield mounted on a war horse, whose chest was uh, protected with layers of some uh, padded textiles, eventually reinforced with uh, small steel sheets. A celata without vizier and of South German production protected his head. German was the steel plate armor as well, to offer the best protection against the pole arms of the elite Janissaries. He would have uh, dropped the gorget, pauldrons, cothers, vembrays, gothlets, and tassets in order to avoid noises, 
become lighter and thus increase mobility. Beneath his armor, he was wearing an uh, arming doublet with uh, reinforced long uh, sleeves made of uh, iron chains that uh, offered optimal protection against thrusts. The groin and the upper parts of the legs were protected with the gambeson and an extra layer of German iron chainmail with typical brass endings. Having to deal mostly with infantrymen or dismounted horsemen, the Voivod did not ignore the protection of his legs against swords and war axes. His weapons of choice could have been uh, a German Gothic uh, cavalry sword with a broad cross guard and in combination possibly with a small uh, wooden shield with uh, iron fittings and covered in uh, leather painted with his uh, coat of arms. Alternatively, he may have um, opted for an uh, oriental saber which was uh, better suited to slashing Ottoman uh, soldiers who, surprised uh, by uh, the speed of the night attack, would not have uh, been able to put on uh, full uh, protective gear. On the other hand, if some uh, Ottoman soldiers had managed to get uh, some of their uh, protective equipment on, the Gothic uh, sword would have uh, had more power to crush bones and provoke internal bleedings. In reserve, he may have kept a light one-handed war axe or an uh, all-metal late Gothic mace while uh, he may have used the axe at least for cutting some obstacles that stood in his way, there was uh, little use for the maze which was uh, designed against uh, heavier protective equipment reinforced with uh, metal plates. Vlad's appearance on the battlefields was a combination of uh, Central European aesthetics adapted to the mobile Eastern uh, uh, warfare with a particular attention paid to the risk minimization and the conservation of uh, limited uh, resources. Unfortunately, no contemporary attempt at visualizing him showed uh, plausible results. They uh, range from silly <laughs> naiveties to gross misunderstandings. From everything I have seen on the internet so far, only one attempt can convince a professional historian and history buff. It is the painting by Romanian artist Dan Janos. So let's discuss it briefly, keeping in mind all I have said so far. First of all, we have to get rid of the long and pompous red mantle that he did not wear even at the palace, except only during laborious ceremonies. To protect his metal equipment from humidity, Vlad would have covered himself at most in a simple cloak. However, given that he was attacking in a particularly hot summer, it is unlikely that he would have used one. The armor is German in a style that was only beginning to become popular in the 1460s and probably reached Wallachia at the earliest in Vlad the Impaler's later years. From this armor, we have to eliminate the small but noisy elements. Speed of attack and the night conditions could have successively compensated for their absence, but we keep the leg protection. The horse is a strong war horse, but not specific to the breeds that were common in the area and related to the small Mongol horses. However, the artist's choice is a wise one. Besides being not uh, prestigious enough for a leader in the Central European context, a small war horse could uh, not have uh, supported the weight of a knight in uh, metal plates. Add to this is the protection of the horse, which the author did not ignore. In short, a big thumb up to Dan Janos against his link here. If you would like uh, to discuss uh, this work in more detail, drop us uh, a line in the comments and share your uh, thoughts. And I, as His Majesty used to end his uh, Slavonic letters, may also wish you 
हर्फली मे गॉड रिजॉइस ओवर यू बाय